Uh, everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Hari Bhattini. I work for the uh, Technical Center uh, at IBM. Uh, I'm going to talk about the first term, but it is uh, internal capturing mechanisms uh, that supported on Power PC. Uh, this part, I'm uh, talk is to do a bit of overview of Kiram and then the Spanish tools we have. And then why we use the Kedam on top of Kedam, what we need to do with the Kedam. In the middle, how we try to call it for years, and you know, where the Kedam stands today. And then, for example, how to build the Kedam so that it can help the architecture. So, a little overview of Kedam is the first common custom solution that has been accepted mainline. Kedam is a common to common root order for a low end of code. The way it works is to do the system memory in your system, first of all, booting your production kernel user to that system memory. And most of the people who are able to look at a special kernel that we call a Kedam kernel. Now, in the event of a task, we jump into this kernel, into this relocatable kernel, boot from that system memory or reserve for it. Now, you can have a snapshot of the production kernel. What happens to devices and ongoing DMA during this jump to, to the crash kernel? That's one of the major problems with it. That's the reason why we probably won't clear it. I mean, I'll probably try to determine it. I mean, can you tell me what happens at the moment with them? So, we assume that the web is supporting something that's part of it. FLR. So any ongoing DMA will continue to run while you're doing this keg to the new kernel, and then the new kernel device driver will come up and it'll reset. 
Does it reset all the devices, some of the devices? What does it do? We don't want all the devices in the system. Exactly. We don't have Why this happens, we are doing via in the government. We are just looking to the kernel and hoping you know, all the hardware components are not acting or real before we do the software setting and generation. Using all just to ensure that we can capture the CPU history. Now, what if we have a problem that we do for you along with the secure hardware device? Now, you have a 
in your category can be very good online. In fact, it's the country is called. In the present, it has been in support and speed of support close to 10 years now. So, what the freedom does is it's the coding mechanism between code and code levels with its own registration properties, which is the point of being referred to. We want to use, you know, some assistance to capture the targets. We provide a metadata to the problem, and so we want, you know, some way to give us the event of the cache. Now, control this provide process in the event of the cache. If you have a problem, you are going to call the problem to just inform it that this is a cache, and I want your help. What some way to do is put the cache to use. And then save the data, make sure it's in the display, right? And the most important thing is that it resets off the device and goes down. Just that is preserved the memory. Otherwise, it's just like a boot, a boot preserving boot. Now, if it's not good as a regular kernel boot, that memory is preserved, it doesn't touch memory. So, I'll give you some ones in the memory yard. The way they are. So now the control is given back to the kernel, which is the time taken as a boot of it after the crash. So now it's up to the kernel, you know, the scenario, right? So the kernel, looking at the kernel side, can be that it is a boot of the crash, and you know, it can be put ahead of the red change, and then after that, the control is in the house, it can be touched, right? You have to be encoded. You can fix it and write it to whatever it is you want to write it to. So the advantages of the system is that you do what you need to do. Okay, right, you have flexibility to dump it to whatever dump target you want. Right. The other thing is that you can do it because you have a uh, input in the background. You can do it, but you can do it over the current initial condition script. But you should expect if the process is not this present, which could activate a certain script. So, the thing is, the memory is not preserved with hardware. And most important aspect of this is that your devices are reset and you are just booting just like a regular kernel. So, now you don't have to worry about whether your drive is robust enough to handle whatever task you have to do, right? Now, even with this situation, it has a bunch of issues, right? One of the major concerns we had is it's still new to the kernel entirely because for the KDOM, we can say it's a capture point, which is super KDOM, right? But for the KDOM, it's a very simple boot, right? You're going via from the time for the production of the capture point. It's just that we have a special pack to indicate for the kernel that it is. Going via the boot loader, the entire operation kernel is what you end up using for the capture kernel as well. So, so it is not optimized for a capture environment. But, so, so think of it when you have a multi pass setup in your system, you have you know, a lot of connected devices, you are using an SS mount to mount all of them in your production environment, but you don't want all of them in your capture kernel environment. Right. You simply want to bring up the contact of the right place. Prefer your way to the right and just say that this is what you want to do. But you end up with assuming the production problem. So that what it does is it, 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 we end up with a full memory system requirement for the capture of the entire system. In Kedam, you don't need as much memory to do the case. What this you need to boot and a kernel. For example, the simple reason that you know we are using kernel in entirely for capture kernel as well for a kernel. The other problem we have is since we don't have some loader like plates to pass the parameters, we need to bring the parameters back to the production kernel. That's another problem we have with it. And again, similar to kernel, the other four header is greater than the production kernel for a kernel. Passing that on via some metadata to the capture point. So, so 
we do have the story before we have as a whole like so we, we saw this problem and just um, you know trying to list the problems we had we produced now let's look at how we try to ensure the problem for the problem over the years. The first problem is the specific for dump dumps are coming. So if we do have the many parties for dump dumps are coming, the reason is the problem has a nation already would have different requirements and that's what someone has different requirements. And most of the time, they don't all of the devices and you know connect to a lot of network devices it won't do that we use multiple devices for example kernel is simply going to you know bring up the dump dump target device right to it and reboot so optimization is a concern for that you can only work in a fraction of the device so what we try to come up with is some Um, so I was, I was wondering, like, can it, um, can the firmware, how does it boot the normal kernel and inside in it through some bootloader? Oh, okay, yeah. so I was just wondering, like, is there a way by which the firmware can pass the information to use the second? Uh, that we could pass a different time of the state that I'm saying. That's what we have to start with. So the point of this video was now we are able to bring out information for capture kernels of the state. And how do we do this? How does all that happen? Now think of a person and recommend that to have a system with like people or so on. But you don't want to do that many codes. The system can work with that many codes, right? Now, you can take the NRC but doing it for taking all the time, right? So that, that's where it is. So it doesn't have to, you know, all the CPU, you know, in the capture kernel. So that's the CPU is 
like little bit tricky basically this if we know there's a CMA uh, we will be able to call the CMA area if not there's a reserved area it's kind of have to get an agreement between the firmware and the kernel configuration and so it's kind of a bit tricky right the, the, the firmware needed to know whether we need to call the CMA so yeah, you, you need to tell the firmware. Yeah. Yeah. So that, so that's the time of the instruction. So 
perform the firmware operation they want to perform the firmware display. So, firstly, could have been reserved normally or could have been reserved as a main firmware for the firmware. Okay, okay, I see. So, I think if we think it the other way, we're going to reserve some memory. Why not use it as the main for the regular kernel? That is what we. Okay, yeah. At first, we didn't use this for the application. Now we are available for applications for the MAR for the purposes. Okay, that makes sense. If you are trying to add memory, doing memory production, because you want, if you are exporting your tempo, you need to have a specific memory you want to export. So, you see the core header becomes That is the right there was passed by the production company, but it doesn't have to be that way. Because you're building your production kernel, you're building your capital, your memory, the memory, amount of memory you want to build in the kernel itself, but you're building some part of memory in the production kernel, you're building some part of memory in the capital kernel. So, what we did was, instead of generating the production kernel in the production kernel, we are now generating the LOC kernel in the capital kernel, looking at the metadata that we passed from to the capital kernel. So, Data will the memory that was used by production kernel. Now it's just a scale for the conversion and then export that reinforce and the flow goes the same way. So the advantage of both is in the production kernel is two don't have to be able to represent the code in the event of some memory actually no operation. So that's the problem that we need for the scenarios. So, so these are the four different issues uh, 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 the concerns about and how we are resolving uh, you know, the last aspect of this particular. Probably we can go a bit about it uh, uh, in subsequent slides. But before that, uh, there is one last concern we have with KDUM or KDUM, right? What is the right memory to reserve for uh, uh, capture current? This is a hard question. The, the problem is for KDAMs and KDAMs, right? You, you don't know what is the right size to uh, resolve. Uh, 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 primary because even for the kernel, if the kernel knobs, you could use for example, different uh, uh, you know, scenarios, different requirements. And, and there could be different pieces as well, like, you know, have an impact on what is the memory size for your uh, capture kernel. And the, one, uh, the number of devices attached, the kind of devices that are attached to the particular network devices, and all of this has an impact on what could be the right memory uh, for your capture kernel. Right? So, what we are thinking of, there is something still in the works, we haven't pushed any time. Have in mind this uh, Why not have fun? So, think of the production kernel work, capture kernel work, and I set up steps A, B, C, and D. Let's say A to B is the user kernel work, C to C is probably being your mature device, C to D is probably your uh, uh, interface space, and D to is your switch work or something like that. Now, between A to B, and is probably not the same as what is the memory requirement between D to C, right? Now, if we could come up with a value that is good for A to B, generally for A to C, you know, the boot process between A to B, for most of the process is the same. The click comes from R between B to C and C to B. B to C is when your drivers are coming up, C to B is probably when your interface is trying to bring up some size or not. So, what we try to do is come up with a fixed that is good enough for A to B, not good enough 
Have a zone that means a zone. If you have a zone, you think you can have it. If you don't think you can have it, you know, be fine. You retain that, we know that it's a challenge. You say it's a challenge. Then it goes to something to see. So, the case of it happens in the capture zone, that will give you an advantage. The reason we are doing deployment of some sort, right? Deployment in any any environment deployment some sort they should point to and if if we could come up with reduce that decision points, that could be a good thing, right? So that's the reason why we have to solve this problem with user when he's looking at the second we can have to worry about whether they you know the memory requirement of that system. You can simply say if it's equal to on, then it will take the end requirement for it to be. So that is this internally run system. And, you know, in the capture system, we do the retailing whatever we need, and that goes to the port in the capture point. You don't have to worry about memory reservation. I'm talking about the
crash. Inform the founder what why another now founder takes over the control and what provides to use all the CPUs to capture the recorded data and uh, make it back to all the regions for the regions we have requested it for and uh, those are the most important of all that for somewhere is helping as well and the important stuff is Uh, I think most of this can be done. The only major thing is in the red button, the point one three and six and so on. So, most of it can be done. So, I think the So a question, um, thank you, first of all, this is a really cool uh, system. I am really excited to, to hear about it. How common is the firmware-assisted feature in, you know, uh, say, x server systems? Is it common? Uh, no, it's a thing, but we would like to implement something like this. Got it. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, um, this might be silly, but I just want to put it up there. Um, since you are anyway booting like a, a normal production kernel, could you avoid one reboot, uh, like let the system come up as it is, and do the dump, and then be ready for production again? Uh, I it's possible, but uh, that's something we The reason I'm saying that you are Making some of the memory and I think it will be first. The reason that you make it yes, it's not the body of the but you have to be smart enough to be able to, you know, when you try things, you know, look at the picture of your system memory now. So, after, you know, if it's a big one, common adaptation, after, you know, you could actually think of the way that it is required. Okay. Need all to be aware of some uh, memory being set early in the book, then you know, but at least after it, now you are, you know, basically uh, you use it just like a regular program. Okay. Okay. That needs a bit of tweaking the code as well. Okay. It has to be something more than one of the I think. 
think Windows does this. Like, I don't know the code, but uh, it just says dumping and then reboot and then you're ready. So okay. maybe something like that could be done. Yeah, I, yeah, I hope, hope we can have something like that. But yeah, that means that we have to So it's just a powerful situation. We surely can't bring the common code to the system of the stack that we have to do. I don't know how many ways to do that. Well, what about uh, other types of? Uh, this was uh, like kernel crashes. Like, what about a uh, watchdog? Uh, a hardware watchdog that kills you. And uh, you should be able to do the same thing if the memory is preserved. So, this is the third thing with the firmware uh, beyond the loop. So, even on a watch, if there is a watchdog, you could have an op on a I just wanted to, to make sure I understood it right. The uh, secondary kernel, the secondary kernel, when you crash, uh, it loads from the same address as the as the, as the first one, or is it loaded in a different? Right. It's loaded from the same address as the first one. That's why we are formally being copied from one different address to some other location. So, when you have to check the function that, you know, I need to go to the same address to the same location. Now, your capture kernel, do tell you to go to the same only. Now, if you do this in a way, it doesn't go to Okay, thank you very much. So, we have a, at the end of the session, let's uh, another round for the speaker. And we have one.